Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm Go Vera Go Home. Today we're gonna learn how to do some scenery, or at least I'm gonna show you how I do my scenery in just five steps. Five easy steps. That's it. I promise there isn't anything more than five. So sit back, grab a coffee, and uh, let's get some scenery done. Okay, so we're doing the quick and easy mountain or hill in five steps, five easy steps. You're gonna see the same process throughout my entire layout, but uh, I'm gonna show you just a step-by-step -step here quickly how I do it. So this is assuming that you already have, you know, the main area of track done for, you know, whatever module or part of your layout that you're doing. Uh, you can see here, like, I still need to do, this is going to be an industry, so we're going to disregard that for now. We're going to pretend that that's not there. So, from the base, because this is your base, the, uh, this could be a plywood top, or in this case, it's just a frame, a module frame. I take my half-inch foam. Now, you can use one inch, probably wouldn't use two inch, but... I take the cheaper route because, you know, you don't need, it doesn't need to be super thick. It's just, you know, half inch. And I create a little bit of a wall, a border, if you will. And it goes around the front of the module. It'll also go down the, uh, the sides. So where this module connects to this module, there's also a little wall in there as well so they can butt up together. Either way, that doesn't really have anything to do with it, but you do want to make sure that you have a wall. Then you also want to make sure that you have the flat surface to which it's going to go to. So obviously you have the bottom of the hill and then you have the top of the hill. So that is step one. You want to make a wall. Just, you know, it could be up and whatever. Does, doesn't matter. Wherever you're having it. So this could also be at the back, which I'll show you another version of that, where just before your backdrop, you're gonna have the foam that you created a wall, just like this here, and it goes right around, and it's just, it's like a perimeter, almost. Let's cut to uh, a backdrop version of the same thing. Okay, this is the backdrop version. But on this module here, we've got the front wall right here, and we also have the back wall. Now you wanna keep in mind, because these are modules, so it's two different, right? You can see right here, that's one module, that's another. We're making the wall down the middle so that we're splitting between this one and this one. So this here is not glued to this. That's not glued to this. And even for this separation here, these right down the middle are not glued together. I could basically take a piece of paper and go right through here, except for the track, obviously, because that's all one piece still. I could basically take a piece of paper and go right through because that's not glued right down the middle there. So you want to start with that. You want to take your backdrop. You want to do your woo, you know, your mountain hills and whatnot. And you also want to do the same thing to the front depending on if you want it to be lower than your track, if you want it to come down, if you want it higher, if it's like more of a, a, a gorge or a, a gully kind of thing where the, the land goes down to the track because the track is lower, lower than the land level. And then that is your step one. Step one is making your hill backdrop or not really fascia because we're going to put the fascia over top of this but you just wanna do that first. Next step, now that you have your pink foam, you also wanna do your fascia. So fascia is step two. This is just hardboard. Uh, I have it one inch below the, uh, the main wood, the main base. So it's going to be the same all the way around. And you won't really be able to tell about anything hanging down because I got my curtain, right? 
but this here is one inch below. So if I put my finger up there, it's one inch. And obviously it's just screwed in and then you do a plaster over it just to, you know, for when you go to uh, paint it or whatever, it's, it's gonna not look like there's any screws there. But anyways, so your fascia is the next step. Uh, you also want to cut the contour as well, depending on the land and the foam that you've already cut behind it. So you want to make sure that that's cut out. And, uh, you know, in some cases you can glue it to the, uh, the pink foam in the wood or whatever, uh, and screw it just so that you've got, you know, it's extra secure and whatnot. You'll also want to do things like this to it first before you secure it, where, you know, if you have to cut out a little hole for, um, you know, your controllers or local net, whatever, uh, in some cases switches as well. Uh, if you have any like toggle switches, I'm going to do that after because I'm not going to have a lot of toggle switches along here. So I'm going to add those later. But second step, fascia. First step, pink foam wall or you know, pink foam at the back. Second step, fascia. So once that is secured, we're going to move on to step three. Your next step, which is step three, is cardboard weaving. Now, obviously, everybody has cardboard. We all order products, so we get pizza, <laughs> you know. So I take all the clean cardboard, anything that uh, I can basically cut down in strips, just like this. It's like uh, maybe an inch or three quarters of an inch wide, and then whatever length you can get. And I'm basically, now it depends on the section. So for something like this here, I'm folding it under, just like this. Yeah, there's a thing. Uh, and then I put the glue on the bottom and right where basically the track is, I glue it down and I'm making sure to make sure it's uh, crunchy. It, it can't be hard. You have to push it in and kind of work it in a bit and you can kind of round it. See how, it, you know, you kind of form fit it. So I glue it down right along here because that's the front. And then I let it hang over. Uh, on this side here, I usually glue it along either the foam or the actual fascia. In this case here, I wasn't able to put the uh, the foam right up against it because it is a big curve. So I more or less just skipped ahead and glued it right to the fascia. I did it right along there. But you can see even small areas like this here it goes right along with the fascia and kind of weave it in here, in and out. And again, an area like this here, where it's split right down the middle, because this is one module and this is another, you want to make sure to leave that wide open there because you don't want to have to go in and cut that after. So that's a, two separate ones there. And you want it to tie in well with... Uh, basically the uh, the landscape here but it'll look a lot better once you cover it in plaster cloth and all, obviously all you're using is hot glue and a knife just to um, you know cut the cardboard glued in place it doesn't take long with the hot glue because once it starts to cool especially in a basement where it's already cold enough it dries pretty quick now, depending on how big of a space here, I mean, I could have gone right down the middle with that, but I pushed it right up to the top so that uh, it'll give me more of a, a mound and it'll give me a, a better look on the top opposed to like halfway down, which really doesn't matter to me. But as soon as this is done here, you're ready for step four. Are you ready for step four? Here we go. Now for step four, it's going to be the quite obvious uh, of all the steps and that's just the plaster cloth. Now I don't have any areas yet that are freshly plaster cloth but you basically you get a roll. I get mine from Michael's. There you go right there and I usually use a coupon for 50% off whenever they do their 50% off things and uh, I get it for like nine dollars maybe less. But anyways you cut it obviously because it's a giant roll so you cut it into strips or squares however you'd like to do it. 
uh, depending on the size of the area. For an area like this, I'll do it in strips just because it is a larger area, but when I'm doing the smaller section there, it'll probably be little squares. So you basically you dip it in the water, you take the excess water off, and you work with the contour, and that's what it looks like after. Now this is obviously painted brown, because like I said, I don't have any um, areas here that are uh, just freshly plaster clothed, not yet anyways, but this is all done here. And you can kind of see the hill. You just want to make sure that it doesn't look like there's cardboard under there. And here's the, here's the difference here. So cardboard and then plaster cloth. That's what it looked like. That's what it's going to look like. And it's awesome because once it dries, you paint it brown, just like what I did here, because this is going to be ready for drum roll step number five. Keeping in mind, Again, when you're plaster clothing, you don't want to go over the crack because that's one module, that's another module. So you want to not, you want to not um, cover up those gaps. So again, step one, make your mound. Step two, add your fascia. Step three, Add your cardboard and weave it. That one's not done yet, but you get the idea. Weave your cardboard. Step four, it's gonna be the uh, plaster cloth. And last but not least, step five is gonna be scenicking. Scenicking, uh, I mean, I haven't done any scenicking yet whatsoever, but I'm gonna, you know, say that right now, step five, Scenicking, you know, use your, obviously your paint to paint it brown as an underlay. And then we'll, we'll get into the whole scenicking stuff later. But that's your five steps. That's easy hill right there. Easy mound. And uh, I mean, you could do that basically in a day if you wanted. Do one section at a time. Uh, I usually like to cut mine up into... My, my, I cut my layout up into sections, and I'll work on a section at a time. Uh, but depends on what you need to do, right? Because I couldn't do any of this mound or anything until this track was down. Uh, I couldn't figure out where this bridge was going until I knew where the track was going. And then, obviously, once I know where the bridge is going to go, I can form fit the outside to go with the bridge. So it all ties in together, as you can see, right? But uh, there you go. And then you've got some hills. And uh, I mean, obviously, there's other things you can do. Like you can add rock faces. Uh, if you're going down, downward, you can add water. Um, there's a section like, where, where was I going to put it? I think right in here. So I go lower than the track because you can add it as like a little drainage here. So you put like a, a pipe coming out, uh, maybe a little concrete barrier. And then, yeah, then you make it look like a little drainage thing. Um, you know, these are all just the little things that you can add later. It's not a big deal. But that's just my pro tip, I guess, for the day. <laughs> just to uh, be able to do something like that and move along with your scenery. Because in some cases, you just, you want to run trains, you want it to look awesome but you don't want it to look like a big four by eight square piece of plywood with some track on it. So that's just a quick way that you can actually add some scenery and still have fun with it and be creative because there's so many different ways that you can do this, but this is just the way I do it. And uh, yeah, have fun and uh, thanks for sticking around. Okay, so I'm just gonna show you real quick here. Uh, I've got it covered with the plaster cloth. This is all freshly plastered and it's already all dry because uh, I let it sit for a couple of days there. Uh, you can see here I ended up scoring it with my knife, a sharp knife, because that's where it splits. So they are no longer attached. So I'll be able to go over this and paint this now. As you can see, I've already started. I use just an acrylic 
uh, burnt umber or a dark brown paint that I get from the dollar store. Very cheap, goes a long way, and uh, now I have a lot to do because I'm going to do the entire front here.